on technical today, Ben. Uh, the video camera's not working at all. Can we sit here? <coughs> Sorry, Ben. Let me see. Just yeah. don't sit there. Just admitting. You never so saw me, did you? I thought I'd go to you. <laughs> She's there. Do you want me to? Yeah, okay. invite me. Yeah. Are the ones, members of the public here? Yeah. Welcome you. No, 
announcements from the chair. There's no announcement. There's nothing going on. The can last you let me know? Mm -hmm. I can talk back. So, um, we confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of January. Yeah, I've got a couple of minor things. Uh, 837.1, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. The activity set the manager hopes to organise a meeting with shareholders as to a brief of two to one. Go. Or is it agreed to? Full stop. No comma. You remember that one? <laughs> that was from last. Where are they? I can find out for you. Uh, yeah. No, I think. I think it. Yeah, to discuss this further. Yeah. Okay, just a comment on it, Sorry, shall I just add in there, folks to organise a meeting as per agree yeah, to yeah. discuss this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. On page 12, I just uh, wanted to make a note of the annual precepts by all the uh, And just to say that um, the one part of the project set is still much better than the later. A Thornbury Gate is the most liberal definition. The more conservative uh, precept, ours is the highest. So, no. Thank you. Got those from. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm not going to write that in, but I'll make you make that in. No, 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 Somebody who can propose the minutes. Yeah, I propose it. I second it. I propose it. We have a second. Are those in favour of the approval of the minutes? Yeah. Anything minute wants to do? Yeah. Tom? Matters number seven, item seven. Deal with matters arising from the minute held on the twentieth. One was uh, which was not covered elsewhere on the agenda, which is seven point one recommendations from the two thousand and eighteen Barclay State Town Council Planning Next stage state park development included equipping the interior of containers, completing of landscaping objects. Tools and equipment. That's just something I to say. There's nothing. Okay, okay. No, okay. No, okay. okay. that's ongoing, so there's nothing on that one. Uh, 7.2 recommendations for 2019. Perfect safety planning meeting. 7.21 baby support activity tends to replace damaged grass, road ground at in the preschool play area. With artificial grass to an adequate play all year round. Uh, do you want to go on that one, Yeah, we've got two quotes in, so that's not enough for you to consider it. So, mm -hmm. Oh, it's a huge difference. I mean, why are we waiting for it? Is this just going to be somebody else? You know, but it, it can't, they can't be bothered to come up with a forest. Do you want to come here? I think I have been. It's yeah. fine. I have been. I normally go for about five to me. Yeah, very sure. <laughs> okay, so um, that's on going. And um, seven point two two Bailey's Court Activity Centre play area, designing the school new play area to replace existing. Um, obviously, 
I'm hoping everybody's read the report. There are a couple of things on this one I'm trying to ask. One is to get you to resolve to have possibly two people become signatories for the application. Um, the other one is asked for advice from Rachel. The financial change, it was a discrepancy raised. Let me find it, sorry, the report's quite large. On page two of the report, there's the financial position that Rachel kindly pieced together. Sorry. Um, the budget options that she suggested to consider is in the event of no further external funding is secured, we've got options one or two, which would be number one, to maintain the maximum budget of quotes at 105 and increase the BSPC funding from 75k to 78k, back to cover the land still funding. Second one is to reduce the maximum budget for quotes from 105 to 102. Um, to account for 3k landfill funding and maintain and we agree to the STC funding at 75k max. With regard, in, in the front, on the front of the report, it does suggest that we have to pay this 10% third party contribution um, and that's the £3,000. Uh, that needs to be paid up by 28 days prior to the work commencing. Or we won't get the No. No. Okay. Okay, switch one of budget options, so you want to go with option one or option two, that in the event that we don't get any extra funding. I'm good, Rob. Good, So there's a proposal on the table to This, in the event of further external grant funding, there will be an additional application for £14,195 with Ipsop Innovate Trust. Um, and the suggestion is, in the event of further external grant funding, if it is secured, options three or four. Number three is to increase the maximum budget to quotes to 105 um, by any additional grant aid secured and meant to obtain the BS. The funding budget at £75,000 or option 4 to maintain the maximum budget for quotes 105 and reduce the BSTC funding budget 75 k by any additional external grant funding secured. There is no hope uh, certain that the additional grant is from uh, an additional. It's one that was recommended by the first grant aid that we applied for, so it was recommended that we apply for this one too. Um, I get them? We're waiting. We should know by the mm -hmm. 20th of March whether we've actually been successful on this application. Yeah, so we've definitely got the 30,000, it's whether we get the extra 14,195. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in case we don't, that's what I would say, uh, option 3 or 4. What do we get? What do you think we could get? So if we if we kept our if we increase the maximum budget on the basis of getting additional funding in, what do we think we could get for that extra funding? What type of equipment would we think we could add or what do we think we could use to enhance the scheme? What you have here, I mean, if you're going for which we've gone for option two, haven't we? So you do think you're talking of this sort of like a three thousand pound discrepancy, isn't that in option two? Mm -hmm. So that's not going to make a huge amount of impact on the actual quotation with the equipment. We could suggest that we have, for example, take uh, the safety surface could be not coloured, so it could be black, which would reduce the price slightly. But 
that is tweaking the specification, mm -hmm. but you're not necessarily going to get any addition. You might use a couple of small, smaller pieces, um, mm -hmm. but three thousand pounds is really going to make quite a lot of money. I think we get additional three thousand points because of the cost of the stock, so therefore the cost of the privacy is going to be more profitable. Hang on, Mister, I think it's more than three thousand. So there's, there's, two, there's two options. The first one is if we don't get any extra funding, what do you want to do for the three thousand pounds? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to maintain the maximum budget at one hundred and five, and then increase our budget to seventy five from seventy five to seventy eight, cover that quicker, or do you want to reduce the maximum growth from one hundred and five to one hundred and two? to account for the three thousand pound landfill funding and maintain the agreed BSCC funding at seventy five thousand. Yeah, so the point is proposed to isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's in the event of us not getting the extra money. Yeah. If we do get the extra money, so it's not an or, it's an and yeah. it's that it's and if we get the extra money, do you want to go for option three? Which is increase the maximum yeah. budget from 105, and we still pay 75. Or do you want to keep the budget at 105 and reduce our contribution by any extra additional external grant funding that we get? I personally agree. Cool. I would agree. You have budget as is, and then you we have to get, we get additional funding that comes off of our yeah, yeah we make the same contribution. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So, so it's the going with option two yeah. and option four. Yeah, four. Okay. So, so I'm going to make that proposal for option two and four. If anybody goes to second, that was good. Roger, oh sorry, Ed. I think Roger just stepped you to the post. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Ed. Oh, it's all right. The drugs will never go with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so those in favour of the proposition options two and four.
of what it should look like. So it's not just me doing it, it follows the format. Obviously it's been passed around to other persons in the volunteer organisations that have um, added their comments on it. Now, uh, I disagree where lines should be crossed out when it's saying suggestions, because they shouldn't be crossed out until it's actually been agreed that that is crossed out, is the first point. However, um, I hope you have read it or taken time to read it because this is a volunteer policy that I feel is for Bradley Stoke. It's not for the wider area and it's not for any other government department. It's ours. It belongs to us. And I feel in us as councillors, we look at it and put into effect what we believe is fair and right to do. And that's pretty much it, really. What 
what is people volunteering for exactly? You know. It will be, well, potentially, who knows, it's just the sorts of things, so there will be well, some healthy, yeah, little other, picking, uh, it could be healthy the festival, the fireworks, yeah. the with youth, youth activities, youth work, it could be all work. sorts of things, yeah, yeah so. Yeah, you've got to volunteer, though, I agree with what you're saying there, Roger, but there's this caveat within it here, saying that volunteers, not being financially disadvantaged by volunteering yeah, and reasonable really. expenses such as bus, fare or mileage should be yeah. offered. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at because you're volunteering. If you have the capabilities to meet that volunteering, um, and the example I use is for a daily bus ticket of up to five pounds to help yes. and if the other thing is if we have volunteers under the age of 18 and they are not working then what you want to do about that because I've just thought about that since rereading it if, if there needs to be a clause for someone or you just don't engage that at all we could say that uh, reasonable expenses for the unemployed and those in receipt of all these, you know, all the benefits. Yeah, all the benefits. And if, 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 if not, then you can volunteer. Yeah, yeah. volunteer. Yeah. I do have something like that in there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But anyway, it's just open-ended, right? It means that anybody can say, well, okay, we'll pay that. Yeah, but okay. we wouldn't pay it. What about the process for having visibility of what's been gone through so much as we see petty cash statements and stuff like that there is if there is a volunteer expense it's included in a report like that so it is coming to council you can see it well, it, it would it would come to council I'm, anyway yeah, it, would really, yeah, 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 yeah. it would uh, be paid moment. out of petty cash uh, at the moment is part of opening who defines what is reasonable that's the issue Definition. That's our officer's job, isn't it? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a proper officer's job. I think, Mr. Radai, he said um, any 
expenses that um, the volunteer and care shall be reimbursed. We don't, the reasonable need to be explained. So in order not for us not to go into detail, we could just put in there that any amount incurred, the cost of the volunteering will be reimbursed. I think about it. The reasonable bit oh. gives the counter the officers the ability yeah. to scrutinise what's put forward, even yeah. if they don't agree with it. Well, someone has to take a decision on reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And I also I wonder whether that you should um, potentially take out this, where it says receipts produced where possible. I think that that where possible actually should be removed. Um, well, yeah. You have to have a receipt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, but I think it's perfectly reasonable. So even if it was a bus ticket, you'd, get, you'd have a bus ticket. Wouldn't you? no, it, I don't see. I think. I think it's realistic to to have in, insist that you have a receipt. Ed, Ed wants to say something. Ed, I, 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 I think he wants to. I think the answer was earlier that the volunteer we expect is within Bradley Stoke area, the catchment area of Bradley Stoke. And a daily best ticket is five pounds. That's from York or something. <laughs> so really realistically you could set it at five pounds. And now you have an amount for it. I mean if somebody wants to take a taxi instead of catching a bus, well they they overstep the mark. You know, there's a limit, I think, that where we can start handing money out. Uh, we all volunteer. I, I, I volunteer being a counsellor, the same as you gentlemen and ladies do. And I don't get compensation. Because you, you're doing it for the community. You accept that part. So I think, to be fair, if we're going to have it in there, that we, we, give, you, we give the access to the bus service. Five pounds. You get the bus there and back. No. Okay, it's proposing as our second It's just a second one, but then yeah. right. I'm, I'm much more comfortable with being you know, evidence based on what they've actually incurred as a cost. And then the reasonable the reasonable element being defined by an off the proper officer of the town council to sign it off. I get what Ed's saying now in terms of you expect a local volunteer to be local but I mean you could equally come up with a scenario where I don't know, there's an old elderly member of the community living in Bradley State and they've got a child or whatever who, well not a child, but they've got a offspring who lives outside the community who comes into this community to do volunteering here to better better their environment that they live in. I think we've got I just I just I feel a bit uncomfortable being very prescript about it other than saying an officer should make an assessment at the time based on circumstances. I think that's absolutely scenario, and and but equally the fact that we make it certainly assumption is that that is possibly going to happen. I, I just feel we just need to make a decision rather than it just being open ended, expectable, which it could be. You know, somebody could come up with a nice and simple map. You know, the voluntary Bradley State, what do you think? Get around there and uh, have people on the station there here. But that's yeah. where they, the officer has to make an assessment based on what's coming I mean, I mean, forward to them. So if they're looking at a huge expense where you wouldn't order through there. It is like this walk in scenario, it could be an old lady, as you were saying, it goes to the door. It's an open ended scenario. One thing, I think you just need to determine it. But then we put a limit on that expense. Otherwise, it's, it's open ended that they basically say, well, yeah, you're the same. And so that. Defeats a bit of the volunteer. It has suggested a five pound figure, and I would second that with the proviso that the officers have the power to look at anything outside the norm. As Ben has suggested, it, it does say here in the policy before you know incurring any expenses, the volunteer should seek permission or will seek permission, not should. If they will, they will seek permission for any kind of expenses. Perhaps it's worth putting the sentence on them, which says it is anticipated, perhaps, that volunteer expenses would be no more than five pounds per day. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But my mentor proposed that the recent expenses are 
fitness move and how you can fit that. Hey, good, good. With, with a, a, a receipt. Yeah, so can I I'll take out the yeah. where possible bit of the receipt? Yeah. 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 The receipt. If you have a well, you don't have to sit in the air, actually, rather than put those in there, sir. Okay. Oh, where is that one? Are you going to propose that, Ed? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Michael is going to second it. Are those in favour? Yeah. 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 So it, it anticipated already not
Their daughter couldn't get a place in the Brighton State Primary School, even though she was helpful. And uh, so I went to South Bloss and uh, it was uh, a really. The way it transpires is schools can make virtually make their own policy. Depends on the size, availability they have, and the number of teachers in the neighborhood. But hopefully, I have to check that that will be uh, succeed by all going back on the 8th of March. Oh, so that, that was like, uh, the just taking the key oil. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 She's uh, she a housing manager, actually. Oh. And she was struggling.
uh, people that bring them out to site, the fact that they are leaving them clearly in areas which uh, narrow pavements and make it difficult for people to get out their drives and things like this. There was somebody on Facebook uh, locally in Bradley Stoke who found them uh, off his drive. He couldn't get out, so he promptly picked them up and threw them on the grass first. Now, you know, perhaps he could have been a little bit more uh, precise in what he said. Maybe he rolled them to the grass first. However, he said he threw them, or there was some somebody that claimed that they were thrown. So, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously this has provoked a lot of feeling. Uh, I simply asked on behalf of Steve Reed at the meeting, our uh, you know cabinet member, if we could provide some photographs. Now I asked for those photographs on Facebook. I promptly received a death threat, and I also received a comment. Grasses get slashes. Now, you know, if that's the sort of comments that you can expect from trolls, you know, if you want to grass us up for being on scooters, you get slashes, all right? That's what that means. Not very pleasant, is it? Um, thank you, Keith. Um, just a, a, a way around. Oh, first of all, what's the situation if somebody's got a provisional license? Which they could have on at seventeen. That's correct. That's correct. Are they, are they are they letting people on at seventeen if they got provisional license? Well, I think that's a question that needs to be answered for Boy, but they're clearly a lot younger than yeah. seventeen. Okay. Kids that are being photographed and being seen are clearly fourteen, fifteen years of age, yeah. perhaps even younger. Yeah. And oh. it, you know, I mean, obviously, they're saying now also that they're not designed to be driven on any pavement, and that includes a shared pavement. Now, if that's the case, I, I still question why they're positioning them on pavements. Because you've got to ride from a pavement, in other words. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you how they're actually getting over it, because I saw it actually happen. Uh, I couldn't take a photograph at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the parents are using the app on the phone, using their license, their debit credit card, and that's how they're doing it to let the kids get on these scooters. And they're saying they they're saw it in Bosnian Road uh, a few days ago. But they're they're trying to maintain that this isn't happening, and you know anybody that is paying quotes and rules, three pounds and you're out. Well. You know, if they're underage and they're already committing traffic offences, look, riding around and around the banks the wrong way, blocking the whole width of the road, stopping people from getting around them while they're swaying in and out. You know, these are road traffic offences. And, it, you know, it does beggars belief that, you know, these things are designed officially for the highway. Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Keith. There has um, already been somebody killed, by the way, Tony. Really? I see that. Celebrity killed on the weekend. I know Davina will call, uh, made comments about, uh, you know, obviously a colleague. Uh, I don't know if it was here. It may have been somewhere, some other part of the country, London, or wherever. But a celebrity has been killed on one. And there was also an incident in Henbury, I believe, last Friday where one was involved in a RTA or an accident with a vehicle. It's um, just for regularity, it's RTC now, they don't call them accident, they call them uh, <laughs> collisions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Michael, would like to say something? I'd just like a question, um, Keith, because I think you're probably better informed on this than I am. If it's a, a powered vehicle and it's on a road, Shouldn't it by law be licensed? Yeah, yeah, you would have thought so. This is why, Michael, at the meeting, there was someone attended from Aiden and Somerset at Portis Head, who is, uh, you know, doing all the monitoring of it. Um, and there's Clive, our Clive Somerset, our local inspector. Well, you know, when Clive said, well, look, we haven't got the funding and we haven't got the time, to be policing this or enforcing it. Bear in mind there are some councils that have had the police funding 
funded by the Scooter Company. Now, there's been no, no mention of that happening here in Eden and Somerset. And, you know, obviously, as I said to the guy at Porter's Head, look, we're hearing one thing from the police here, our local policeman, but we haven't got the funding, and we haven't got the manpower, and we haven't got this as a priority at this moment in time to be enforced. Now, you're hearing quite openly and seeing by the responses of the public and the photos that there are road traffic offences occurring. So are you saying that you're not going to police road traffic offences? Because if you are, that's a very dangerous situation. Are we going to wait for somebody to be killed? Yeah, thank you, Chief. Uh, any more questions? Uh, sorry, any more uh, things from John Ashes not here? So I'm uh, sorry, the end of the of course we should. Brian's not here. Brian's not here. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the. Um, is Rachel available now? Check. Check. Ed has his out. Oh, sorry, Ed. I missed you. So yes. Yeah. Sorry. I, I was waiting to be concluded that part. So I do have a question. Are we as a council able to ban them in Bradley Stoke and just say not interested, not having them? They're banned as far as we're concerned. Nobody's asked this council or even consulted with this council. Yeah. It's just been forced out of us. I think that they just fly to a twin and don't tell you Yeah. That's a very good point though, Ed. I, I think, you know, seeing as we are in a pilot scheme, somebody's got oh. to make a decision locally on whether or not we do want them in Bradley Stoke or not. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would vote ban them. There's, there's no regulation around supporting it. Uh, the, the initial take-up has just shown how ludicrous it is, and the wayward types are enjoying it because they see a free ride, pardon the pun, and anyone that gets away with being naughty will continue. So I think you've got to nip it in the bud, just turn around and say, OK, there was the opportunity, you had it, you fudged it, you're not getting it. Sorry, this council will not put up with that kind of behaviour in, in, um, in our environment. We like a nice, safe, happy place. We don't want anyone going through the stress of it all, or death. So ban it. I just say, absolutely ban it straight out until something better comes along. Yeah, uh, perhaps we could make that recommendation to say, of course, well, it's, it's on the agenda for planning the environment because it came up with planning the environment in February. So I've done, I'll do a, so it's on the, an update. Yeah. So yeah. As you heard from Sharon, it's on the agenda for the planning meeting next uh, 24th of March. But yeah, the suggestion to, if, if the overwhelming feeling for councillors is actually we don't want them in the town, then that will be reasonable. But, yeah. Okay. So have we got Rachel? I think so. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, can you turn your volume up a little bit? Can you turn your volume up a little bit, Rachel? Is that better? Uh, okay. okay. So if we go back then to the um, 7.8 all sites gas and electricity review. Okay, you'll have to bear with me because I was trying to get online on an iPad and phone and none of them wanted to play. So I've just I, I wasn't sure where we were. So you've got the report in front of you. I have got a uh, bit more of an update on this. Um, so the three-year fixture and contract for our gas and electricity full sites uh, ends at, on the 31st of October. We started looking at this last November um, after we were approached by uh, several brokers throughout the market that were saying they might be able to get um, get us tied into an early contract now because um, there are expected hikes coming um, in in the utility market. Um, so uh, we, we've gone through uh, several rounds of this and then um, I think it was January, no, December finance agreed that uh, we would um, trim it back to a final two being regency purchasing limited and consultative utilities. So 
Um, on the report there, it's the broker recommendations from both. I, I gave both exactly the same spec. Uh, Regency uh, Purchasing um, are the, uh, the company that then go out and uh, approach other um, uh, companies in the local area or, or from my understanding, sort of, uh, those that have been recommended. Um, so so uh, they're not actually uh, the brokers themselves. Um, so on, without going through all the uh, recommendations and everything from uh, each of the brokers, um, on page three there is a summary of the quote and attached on the back is uh, more in-depth information of the individual um, amounts per site that uh, we, we were quoted. The back page does not include um, what they call CCL, which is the climate control levy that is the tax that's put on to um, certain higher usage um, gas um, uh, utilities. So uh, we would pay that to Bailey's Court, I think it's Bailey's Court and Jubilee Centre, and for all the electricity. Um, speak up, please, Rachel. Um, I'm, I'm speaking as loud as I can. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, page three. Um, it, that's just basically a summary, and that includes uh, the CCL charges, rather, um, so that we have got a clear picture of the total cost. Um, mm -hmm. Shortly before the meeting as well, funnily enough, a uh, consultant utilities uh, phoned me and advised that they have managed to fix this price if council wanted to go with it, uh, with total gas and power, uh, so that um, um, if, if it was approved tonight, we could action it tomorrow and total gas and power would keep this exact quote fully open and frozen until Friday. So um, I know that was quite attractive for um, council um, when we were considering this previously. So between the two of them, there isn't much in it cost-wise. Uh, £351 a year. Uh, so uh, consultative utilities, we know that um, that is going to be the price based on on the uh, kilowattage usage that we provided. Uh, the broker recommended by utility purchasing, uh, it's an indication they cannot give a price until we actually um, go into the market on the day. So I have uh, put forward a, a table of pros and cons and they were both very good. Um, so um, so what, what you're saying is that we're going to ignore regency purchasing because it's they they can't guarantee it right this minute, but they can guarantee it on the day. It, and it, they are considerably cheaper. Well, no, I mean, I, I put the pros and cons there. I mean, um, it, it, it's the council decision. I, I put a recommendation at the end. Um, on the last page, there is, uh, I've also put the budget position. Um, that clearly shows that at the moment, and on that fully opportunity that we did apply, that is likely to actually go up because this is based on the year just on where we have had these pieces um, for this reason. Uh, but uh, within the budget that we have got in the plan, we could go with either. So I just set this up in exactly the same uh, format of our pre of the previous round um, with with just pros and cons and uh, I mean I I personally put one of the pros as being that you know that they can guarantee the price so you do know what you are voting on bearing in mind that the prices are going up. Rachel, I mean there's a plethora of companies willing to provide electricity and gas. Tons of them. Why did we only go with these two? No, um, what these brokers do, they each go out and look at about 30 different companies. Oh, all right. The, I mean, it, it's like um, any other broker. They don't just... Um, this is the best they come up with, is it? 
speak of the best ones that they have come up with, and it is interesting that they're both pretty close. When you say both, there's three? No, on, sorry, on page three, um, consult, on page three, the summary of quotes between consulted utilities and regency purchasing. Once you add the climate control levy on, uh, consulted utilities is coming in at £24,817. And the broker recommended by Regency Purchasing is coming in at 24,466. Yeah, just a little bit, kind of fractionally less. Yes. £351 a year difference. So, I mean, the, uh, um, you know, so, so at the end of the day, it, it's up to council. I've put the, the pros and cons there. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I recommended consultative utilities purely because the price was so close, but they could guarantee that price, um, whereas Regency Purchasing, they cannot guarantee the price until we go into the market on the day. Now, normally in the financial regulations, um, um, utility um, contracts, don't need to have the formal approval because they, you know, sort of they are very fast acting. The reason this is, is, has been brought to you is because with, you know, our current contract does not end until the end of October, so that's why it has has been brought. But um, they were both very competitive, so I just thought the edge was that we have a, you know, we know what you're voting on. But, you know, it's I mean, at the end of the day, you haven't got to tie into anything now at all. But um, all the signs are that the prices are going up. So that's the reason that this exercise was, was carried out. Chair? Yes, uh, Kate. Yeah, um, firstly, I'd just like to thank Rachel for the work she's done on this exercise. Um, I. I have one concern. Now, at the moment, Ofgen uh, have announced, haven't they, that, you know, prices, are, well, and the companies have said their prices are going to go up. And only today, in fact, I had my electricity one telling me that mine was estimated to go up by about £150 this next 12 months. Now, um, the one thing that does occur to me that got said last week was that Ofgem have ruled the companies to pay back a large sum of money, and it's going to go back something like 10 years for overcharging. Mm. Now, do you think, Rachel, that the town council may be affected by that? I, I, I couldn't say for certain, but generally the overcharging is errors in the bills because there are a lot of errors. We do check ours. Um, yeah. We regularly check the uh, the meters and yeah. and that it then generally is checked against the original contract that was agreed. I mean so, more and more people now have smart meters and yeah. you know technology yeah. put in but you know what they're implying is is that the overcharging has still gone ahead and I know of cases, certainly with the water meters and various other appliances, where, you, you know, meters have been racing and all sorts of things. Now, obviously, this is very alarming, but, I mean, let's hope, as a town council, then, that we're going to be told that we've got a big, you know, refund coming our way. Then we won't have to worry, will we? But, um, but I just wonder... <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, it's a big hope, but, you know, who is it? <laughs> you might get one, Roger, you know. Um, but, well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, obviously they've said it, so if they've said it and implied it, that, you know, this can go back 10 years in cases, then certainly there's going to be, you know, big payouts being made here. And I dare say, if they make big payouts, they're going to have to, you know, fill that big gap with... Uh, they're going to find in their finances. Oh, I won't get a payout, Keith. I change mine every year. So, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I was going to say, we've gone with Grayson for uh, a number of years. Um, yeah. So, you know, but they're the qualified uh, people. Um, we've also had some very, very keen contracts. Um, and the fact that, you know, we, we do lodge uh, meter readings, although all bar two of our meters uh, across all sites are now uh, smart meters. Uh, but we still check those on a monthly basis to make sure that the bills are relative to our usage. So I wouldn't rule it out. I would love to have um, uh, <laughs> yeah. money into the void plan. But, yeah. um, well, I think as Rachel said, we haven't got to, we haven't got to move on this at this time anyway. But you know, if we if we are looking for a, a move on this, then I'm certainly prepared to move uh, what uh, Rachel has suggested. Um, one thing is though, if you go onto the very back page, which is the kind of the parasol. Mm -hmm. All of these quotes have been fixed on the date being correct on the 1st of the 3rd of 21. Yeah, yeah. And Regency purchases are the cheaper. Yes, and so that price that they have in there, um, so uh, total power and gas... Um, Not guaranteed. Uh, it, the total power and gas one is guaranteed, but the Regency purchasing isn't. And it says, uh, another major thing was uh, that I did, did look into it because I'd never heard of British Gaslight. So I did actually have a look on uh, across the internet, um, and it does appear to be, from the information that I, I got hold of, that, that uh, it, it's like an economy version of British Gas, which is aimed at, at uh, small to medium sized businesses that generally have one site. So um, we'd have to have multiple accounts with multiple logins as well to, to run those. And it is completely online. You cannot deal with them in person. It is completely online, which did worry me a little bit. Bear in mind we've got public buildings, you know, um, and also if, if there were uh, pricing discrepancies or a problem. I, uh, at times, it's very useful to get a faster, um, 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 to prep things um, faster to be able to speak to somebody. On yeah. I, I've used Regency purchases before. They're a big buying group. They're really? huge. They're all over the, please make sure mind finish. They're a big buying group which, which operate all over the country. And your link with this particular uh, gas company or whatever is through Regency purchasing. They actually check those bills for you. Yeah. It's part of their uh, agreement. So, so do you work in terms of utilities? So, what, what, so what, you said you have got contacts that done online, but your contact is with Regency purchasing. Yeah, yeah, but there's a problem, Regency purchasing will sort it out. They, we did actually state in their um, in the recommendation, uh, just so you know, they did actually highlight. Please be aware that it, it is all done online for British Gas Light, and therefore the billing and other account clearance <coughs> are online only. That is the only reason. Is that <coughs> That's true. That was the only reason why I then had a look at British Gas Light. Yeah, I, Rachel, sorry, I think you're missing the point. Regency purchasing are a buying group, of which, if they actually monitor whatever company you're dealing with, and if there's a problem, they deal with it on your behalf. Yeah. It actually yeah. saves you any issues of having to bring anybody or speak to them. Your contact is with Regency purchasing. I did consultative utilities, but I, perhaps I've read it wrongly, I took it where they've actually said, you know, it's online only, but that would leave us high and dry a bit. Perhaps I misunderstood. No, you, 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 you're not when you're dealing with reading to purchases. Okay. I've dealt with them, so I, I know exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay. 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 Okay
we have a character on TV unit cross from the very day. Yeah, so it might have gone up 10% by that, yeah? Yeah, but, but these are all based on the same type, on the same date. Yeah, and they're based on the same date. And, but and it's not guaranteed, is it? They're, they're Here it is. a good thousand pounds different. But not a thousand pounds different. Are they for regular yes, set of three? 23,494, 
whether council do want to investigate out of sorting payroll, so it's just whether there's agreement for both of those actions. I'm happy to propose them. The, uh, the actions. The actions. Okay. Policy and so ben, ben would like to propose those two actions that's required. That's just discussed. Then, uh, Ed, second or second in? Yeah. And then to favour then? Tom? Okay. Extension. No. Okay. Screen. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. So, so the next. So uh, the next page. Yeah. It's the state and the effectiveness of the internal audit because part of the. Um, um, sort of council's position is, is to make sure that our audits are adequate and effective and forward thinking, which is why we do have our um, carried out by council of council. Um, um, uh, they, they don't make it easy. You, you do have to sort of really, really um, sort of be, be involved. So um, it was noted that the in year internal audit reports carried out by subgloss uh, saw the financial control for this procedure rated at a high standard being the highest level attainable. It was identified as part of the report that two ex councillors were still named on various banking and investment mandates. It was acknowledged that council are aware of this and that new mandates have been impacted by the COVID 19 lockdown and the Manager, um, um, yeah, on the previous one, we asked for to be taken off, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but obviously, sort of with lockdown and, and sort of carrying my absence um, and, and, you know, sort of um, showering, <laughs> he tried to get uh, some mandate to, uh, off the bank, um, but it, it was virtually impossible. So. Um, you know, uh, moving forward, it was it was also be very difficult to get everybody possibly to sign them because um, some um, the shielding. Um, um, so, so um, um, I can the order, so they fully understood. Um, and they did recognise that there was no um, security risk and, and it didn't encroach on any of, um, of council's procedures or the need uh, to have those signatures at that time. So they put it down as a comment, but um, council have got to look at changing the signatures um, in, the, in the near future. Normally this is done at the main AGM, but the internal auditor would like them done um, and dusted by the 1st of June. And if it's agreed at the May AGM, these are quite um, time-consuming documents to fill in. So um, I would suggest if council agreed that signatures are agreed at this stage and we implement them. And then if you wanted to change them later in the year, um, uh, um, then, then you'll be free to, but um, at the same time, we would then be within the internal auditor's um, requested timeline. So, in my report, I have noted who the signatures are. So, Sharon is the signatory on everything, um, as is Andy. Barclays <laughs> um, uh, and Lloyd then have um, John Ash and Roger. Uh, Brian Hopkinson and Ben. Um, so we need to take Nikki Haller off of there. Um, Cambridge and County, it's Sharon and Andy, um, they're the two main authorised officials. 
uh, and Franklin, uh, and we'd need to take a lead off. Uh, United Trust Bank, uh, it's Sharon and Andrew, are again the officials uh, with John uh, and Franklin, and we would need to take a lane off. And uh, Sharon, Andy, uh, as the authorised signatures, the CPLA Local Authority Property Fund, uh, with John Ash and Franklin, and there again we would need to take the lane off. So, it's whether you want to maintain the core of those existing signatures, um, and or add additional signatures to any of those um, banks and investments. I bear in, bear in mind, most of our banking space is internet banking. We, um, we only need the signatures for investment and the odd check at the moment linked to investment. Yeah, I think we just take the people off uh, looking at the way to just delete it. I'll second that. Uh, all in favour? We've got the pleasure and second there. Thank you for coming, that was Roger. Second, yeah, second it, my point. Thank you. Those in favour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A question, Chairman, if I may. Um, Rachel, do we just rubber stamp this at the AGM? Um, Is 
uh, to consider what to proceed with the more in-depth procurement audit um, and the state would be um, agreed at a later date if the uh, current state um, needs to be expanded, um, which would obviously affect the price if it, if it needs to be longer, uh, and to consider, consider whether to anonymise the name of suppliers for any future quotes. Um, that already happens with tenders, uh, but it's very helpful to do it for other folks as well. Um, um, if that's the case, whether uh, further amendments to the financial regulations are required as well uh, regarding obtaining three quotes. Although council did change the wording that you approved earlier in the meeting, so. Um, that's probably already covered where you uh, where you have um, imposed um, um, the fact that um, any quotes it, it can be uh, taken back to um, uh, the start again and, and restarted. So uh, those are those are the three actions to be considered. Yeah. There's just one fact which I'd like to put in, if I mention to Ben on the phone, is that uh, the MOB requires three quotes on everything. Yeah. And that's just a fact. Mm. And I don't see why we can't effectively work on those same principles. So we don't need an audit, we no. can make that decision ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've already written that in the, into the financial way. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we need to discuss it anymore, really. No. No. Okay. So, no. I, I mean, when we were, when we had the internal government meeting, uh, this was discussed, and Sharon, correct me if, if I'm wrong. You did. Um, it, it has been a bit, bit more difficult during the COVID period, uh, from my understanding, to get quotes off of, but... Um, it, it is just, yeah, I know, it's just things right. have taken longer. Hopefully, going forward, yeah. things are definitely going to speed up, and yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll we always way. get three, if not more, quotes for things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. without that. But, yeah. Yeah. But, but at the same time, when you've rewritten the financial reg, if there was something urgent, you you then have the you have the option whether to proceed on the two quotes if that's what you wanted. But um, you know, it, it is three quotes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we I think we've really exhausted this one, Rachel. We had a very long meeting to decide. That yes, we would go with three quotes. And you know, so we'll stick with that and we'll, we'll move on. Thank you. Can we put a vote on the actions? So, so do you vote, want to vote on no action to be taken? Yeah, no action no. to be taken. Right, okay. We're not doing anything around the anonymising the suppliers until we've had a full set of quotes and stuff like that. So, who's going to propose that we do no action? Oh. Roger, Ed seconded. Those in favour? Tom, you there, Tom? Well, that's the result. Yeah. Okay. It's on the boat. Okay. Yeah. 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 The results of the internal audit. So just key fronts, risks and key actions were put there. We've already um, covered the bank uh, mandate change and the decisions being made and the audit report is attached. So whether there's any further questions. So just say well done. Uh, well done, Sarah. Uh, Rachel. Thank you.
<laughs> no, actually, if you see that one, the the based on uh, the last sentence, which says, based upon this report, Bradley Stoke Town Council has managed to maintain the highest audit standard through yeah, a yeah, difficult yeah, year yeah. involving lockdowns and remote yeah. working. Stats 
through thick and yeah. being queued and by thick, you know, bits and pieces that they need. So yeah, we do. Otherwise, we'd be forever going to the um, cash point and getting cash out. Okay. And yeah, we do need something. Right. Okay. And there seems to be a need. What we need to do is decide on which one to use. Yeah. Can I just clarify as well, it is in there, within our internal control procedures, uh, nobody can use their card for anything above £100. It has to be authorised. And if it's not, we can hold them accountable to pay that balance. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, I, I, I can see the security side of it. I was just trying to ascertain the need, and there appears to be a need. Well, we yeah. just need to decide on which card. So select charge card is your favourite, isn't that John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the cheapest, yeah. we're not going to have any more than that. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, 42 pounds, you know, sort of, uh, rather than the time of people going in to cash points and getting cash out. It's the APR property yeah. So, if you'd like to propose that we go with the select charge card, Yeah, it's, uh, it's proposed for the end second day. Who's in favour? Tom. Tom's there, thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay, moving on. The next thing is... Usage policy. Charge card usage policy. Rachel? Um, well, uh, uh, it, it, it's based on um, how... It's based on what you've already said, isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> let's, let's say it's based on what you've already said. Sorry, can I just go back really, really quickly? Um, yeah. before, on, the, on the last page, I had put down uh, a... A to E avoids the council to agree. Uh, so you've just agreed to the sort of uh, Barclays charge card. So um, are you happy that that will encompass items A to E as well? In the back of this one? Yeah, back of the report. It's just so that everything is squeaky clean and you know, you've got full control. Yeah, I think we're happy with that. Lovely. Oh, uh, next item then is the, the uh, annual review of Bradley State. No, they didn't do that. Huh? The charge card policy adoption. Okay, the charge card use policy terms and condition. Go on, Ed. Are we happy with it? Yeah, second to uh, Okay. Ed. Ed and Stephanie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's in favour? Stephanie, Jeffrey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to move on to the annual review of Barton State and Gareth and Fort Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you want to say something? Matt. Uh, Matt, Matt yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matt, yeah. Would you, do you want to say anything about your football club agreement? Uh, no, not really. I'm just interested to see if the price is going to go up uh, at all. Uh, 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 the, the report um, that we put forward, uh, it went up to chairs with um, various options that were sort of based on of the decisions that council had made linked to leases and higher charges um, heading into next year. And the uh, chairs came back 
um, saying that they agreed um, uh, an increase of 0.5% uh, being in line with councils made them the decision for uh, the bold, quicker and scarce leases because um, most towers don't have uh, reduced amounts and dedicated uh, spaces um, which, which um, applies in this case. So um, it's increasing uh, the two-hour weekly charge from £8.50 to £8.60 a week. Um, I was in contact with... 18, not 8. Yeah, 1860. Sorry, 18, what's my... Sorry, 1850 to 1860. So basically, it's going up by 10 pence a week. Um, and that was referred to the uh, the football uh, club. I can't remember who it was, actually. Yeah, it's myself. It was just, just, just to clarify this. I, you know, I've gone seeing things 10 p.m. You know, that, that's fine. We're, we're happy We're happy to pay the extra 10 p. Right. Do we need to vote on that? Yes, please. Okay, so vote to vote to propose that. Is it? Yeah. Uh, uh, Keith is seconded it. And vote in favour? That's unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, great, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. It's a long way. Matt. Yeah. It's a long way. 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 So I can do this one quite quickly. So um, you agreed who would deliver the annual report back in December, but unfortunately, since the acceptance of quote due to a change of circumstances, the individual awarded the job is no longer able to carry out the work. Therefore, I've now got an alternative quote. So um, your three quotes are in front of you. No, um, It's a lot of person who had no, who yeah. had actually. When I emailed him, he then actually phoned and pulled it up and, you know, oh, right. then emailed back, so yeah. Well, it's a case of Bob's your uncle, really. Yeah. Uh, Jackson Gaines was quite good, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So uh, that's what they say, 90% more. Yeah. So, uh, I to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know if he's reliable? Well, hopefully we will see. Yeah, won't we're stuck, and we're stuck if, them all in the way, spinners. Well, if they don't get delivered, then yeah, we'll he know, does yeah. use GPS tracking, so we can, oh, right. he will yeah. you know, send them up there. But a time will tell on that one. Well, I'll go for Bob then. I'll put Bob in the Do we use Bob on a certain period? Are we going to end the year contract? No, it's just to deliver the annual report. Okay, okay, right, yeah. okay. One and one on is one well, job. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if it's not a good job, then yeah, obviously yeah, we'll 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 back to him in next year. It looks like something like the first problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
mess with you. You can cheat with that. Yeah. What a body what average. Mm. Immobilization. Yeah. Does that mean that the vehicle so I think the whole thing. Yeah. 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 That's the really one that good. yeah. I don't have that so down. I'm pretty sure it is real, but by actually installing something like that, then you should get a cheaper choice. What all the things you can buy there that can see that in the first for you? Yes. There is a either frozen or the immobilization. So if the vehicle is actually stolen, it can't be moved, it won't be. So it's an added, but we haven't had them sold, we just have a big sold of them sold out. It's just a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of a we don't work for if they wanted to go into a bin. You can all get it on your phone and get it on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time to do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. Then if I remember stuff to do that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. 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 I do prefer the one above it though as to what it gives you in terms of information. For eighty four pounds you've got I'm getting a lot of info from it. Well, Whereas for one hundred and twenty pounds per day, we're getting a lot of stuff there, like immobilizing immobilizing if we got stolen and geofencing the area so they can never really be properly safe. <coughs> on that one there's a quote two, sorry, on that one that's not clear. That's a quote one the high wider than the quote two. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. that so it's a bit of a punch to punch stuff, yeah, but... I don't know, to me, it's going to be more fine here, not Yeah, for the month as well as part of the uh, revisation. Yeah, there is several agreements there with uh, various. Well, what have we got? There's bells and whistles to that. We want headlights, alarms on there. Well, that's quite good actually. They've got an SLA to guarantee things up to 99.9998% it's out there in the details of the SLA, you're not really going to see the panels in it. Not and that is probably a small print somewhere, which <laughs> says what is the third of the group. I don't know if it's a good one. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering whether there's a cost to the call. Would the service level agreement yeah. you made at the banks or the vehicles got changed? I would imagine there'd be a cost in if the vehicles got changed to actually be removed or reinstalled. I don't think that's a service level agreement. Service level agreement just is what they will do, isn't it? If they, they put that in writing, what their offer is. Yeah, it's the level of service that you expect from them, isn't it? Yeah. Which some of, I mean, some of that would be when they're guaranteeing up times and things like that. And, but you don't. Without the detail of the SLA, you don't know if that means that we get a reimbursement for costs if the system went back. Well, what do we need to know? We need to know where the vehicle is. Okay. The bottom one would do that adequately. I mean, do we need all this other stuff? Great that it is. I'll see all the, the techniques from that. <laughs> what, 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 we're looking at 298 quid, we've got two vehicles against the uh, 158. Well, we could afford it, but do we need it? Really? Well, I mean, that, that, that is the officer's of recommendation at the bottom well, of that, to not, not install it. Yeah. Because everything is now put in place, so hopefully 
Yeah. Why don't Why don't we suck it and see what we do with our current level of security by doing the paperwork of what we've decided? For the report. See how it goes, and if we feel we need to get back to the right time, then just turn so back back to what What about insurance? So could we have a feedback on this for here? If we would the insurance be cheaper for having those devices installed? So therefore, the cost of the insurance deduction might actually pay for track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the yeah. 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 So then it might be worth having all bells and whistles track because you've got the cost back from the insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's worth that little exercise just to check. Mm. But I think on this particular item, we'd say that we will hold that player. Yeah. So we don't make, need to make any decisions. Do we need to vote on that? We don't make any decisions. Yeah. Um, well, you could if you're saying to um, come back to the next meeting where when we when we found out or even. Yeah. Well, could you just come back to the next meeting after the question? Yeah. Yeah. Just leave it at that. Yeah. 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 So come back to the next meeting. Yeah. So yeah. carry forward. Yeah. 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 Sour forward line, ensure the patient is established. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, next one is both the two main renovated parts in maintenance and sour bed. This is expensive, isn't it? Yeah, I, so if I, I know this, this obviously, this, this is Dale's report, but yeah. so what we had is a, a, a trial period, if you remember. So we put the the beds in and then we maintained them for a year just basic maintenance but without any watering in there but unfortunately due to lockdown well some of them aren't too bad but some of them are a tricky diet so obviously if this is the way that council wants to go to do very you know nice flower beds then this is the sort of cost yeah, so far. So we couldn't, we can't proceed with only one quote. Uh, well, uh, it's very, it's very unfortunate actually that South Wales Council weren't in a position to put it to quote because they've got the choice of that means because they do our law, they do have the license, but they come back and they're very happy. Yeah, well, that. Well, actually, that might not be because that might not be a really hefty charge because that includes watering as well. Oh, yeah. and that's How often yeah. yeah. they water it? That's where you do when you get some yeah. 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 Because we're working with the garden now. Yeah. So we put that one in a band? Yeah. 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 Quotes from maintenance of cricket wicket pitches at Bailey's Ball Activity Centre. And we do have a representative from the cricket club at yeah. the meeting. Oh, we do. Yeah, uh, uh, Andy. Oh, yeah. right. He's quite right. Now, does anybody want to say anything on this first? No. Right. The question I want to put to Andy, because I've actually done a little bit of research. Um, maintenance um, of cricket squares from various clubs, locally and a little bit more distant. And I haven't found yet one council that financed the maintenance of a cricket square. All the clubs I've spoken to maintain their own wicket at their own expense. Hello? Oh, okay. <laughs> question. Hey, pardon? So what was the exact question? My question is, do you know any other council, but I haven't found one yet, that pays for a cricket club maintenance of their own wicket? I know of no, no. I don't, I don't know of any other cricket club that doesn't interest me whatsoever, if that makes sense. I'm purely interested in, in our club. I've never played for any other club, I've been here for about five years. I, I, I don't talk to other clubs about their arrangements. We talk to them about how to make good grass wickets. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. 
I, I suppose I think about 12 or 13 clubs, and there's not one of them that don't actually finance the maintenance of their own square. Is that including clubs that play on account for what they Right. If that's including clubs that play on council property, yes, it does. Yeah. As I say, I, I'm, I'm not aware of any arrangements from other clubs. I, I, I have no. I'm just, I just, yeah, zero. And effectively, like we're paying sixteen thousand pounds to maintain your or our piece of ground, but for your use. Uh, so uh, where do you come from? And what I'm saying is that there's not another council that's doing that. So it's like sixteen thousand pounds. Yeah, sixteen thousand five hundred and fifty-four. This was this was actually sorry, Chair. That's is that the one you're looking at on the front yeah. there? That's John's original report in two thousand and twelve. The value of the council's contract. Well, this was back in this was the history of how the cricket club have taken over the maintenance of the cricket square. And back in 2012, you uh, following discussion, council then will propose acceptance of the proposal allocation of budget to well, seconded by council Tony Griffith. So back in 2012, it was agreed that the payments would be £8,270 a year, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So currently we're paying £8,270 for the same payments there. Okay. And that's what this group's yeah. years. Ed, 
Hi. I, I think the underlying question is that we as a council provide certain sporting activities for the betterment of people living in Bradley Stoke. Now, on a per head capita cost, we went out and spent £200,000 plus on a skate park. Yeah, but So, how many people use the skate park? Let's keep the figures, let's keep the figures easy, see? Yeah. And we say it's 30 people. So 30 people got £200,000 spent on the sport they like to do. I, I like dry grass skiing, so you haven't built me a hill, and you haven't built me a mountain. <laughs> 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 we can do. <laughs> we'll find somewhere. So, <laughs> the roof is built. <laughs> but I, I think the point that, that for the cricket club that we have to, within that consideration to make, we were prepared to put that much outlay for uh, a particular group with a sport in mind in Bradley Stone. They're quite a large group as well. <laughs> yeah, a large group, but then yeah. at the head back would say you can work out. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, if you had 80, 100 people, 200,000 divided by 100 is the math. So we were prepared to put that man per head for people to enjoy a sport in Bradley Stoke. So I, th I think when we come to the cricket point of view, we have to keep that f fractal in mind. Yeah. That there's a group of people that want to play a sport. Now we as a town council have said, we're here to promote the well-being of people that live in Bradley Stoke. Stoke. And if cricket be one of those things that we've already taken on, then I think we should be fair. We should be fair in our assessment of what we're spending to provide that service. Mm. Irrespective of what anyone else does. We are Bradley Stoke. We are different. Right? That's why people come to Bradley Stoke. We are different. So I would just like to point to be that we need to be circumspect on the services we give to make this a better place to live in. Yeah, thanks, Ed. I like that. <laughs> um, I was going to get quotes for fly skis later. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Do we need to vote on this? Do we need to? Yes, yes. Yeah, I propose that we, uh, we go ahead with the cricket club to uh, terms and conditions. So, uh, we we second we like is that yeah. to include the five yearly or is that to include three yearly? Six? Um, I'd go with five. Yeah. Okay. Roger. Okay. Michael. So the we're going to talking about it here, we've got a proposal in a second year for a five year agreement on this figure and a stick. And we've got a proposal, we've got a second of these in favour. Hang on just a moment, Jim, if I may. Do we actually want to take that figure? Um, Increasable by the same amount each year as we do for the Bulls Club and other clubs. It went up by half a percent, I think. This, this is to do with the maintenance, not to do with the yeah. rate. So this is the yeah. actual yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's a bit more fixed for the five so years. So going back to what we were saying, that five years are fixed the fixed fee. And we've got, we've got a second of those in favour. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sick, sorry. Can you repeat what was the decision Michael was giving you about? I'm actually sick as well, so Tom. Tom, what we're voting on is the maintenance of the cricket square at Bailey's Court. The cheapest. Like I said, we right. proposed it should be done by the club. Is it yeah. we yes. taking it or are we the club taking it? The club. It's yeah, the club. The, the, the various quotes have come in and the cheapest one is the actual cricket club doers themselves using okay. some of our equipment. Okay. Is that all right, Tom? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So we've got the closing, we've got a second. Are in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in together and come up with a scoring system. So you go, for example, say you go over um, the quality, the timelessness, so make sure that you have your set standard for um, awarding that tender. Now I'm a bit confused on this. In the first page, down the bottom, that the evaluation is related to follow. That would cost seven forty percent. Finding that ten percent. Yeah, on the second page, the evaluation period play value forty percent. Value for money ten percent. You can't correct that, is it? No, this is no one did it. No, why this one is money. Why is money so low? Can I just ask, Jim, is this an original scheme or have we borrowed it from another council? This is something that I have used in another council, but this is something to be played with, so it's something that if you decide to use it for awarding tenders, it's something that would be help, might help you decide how you would like to write to make yeah, it. So with these two pages, these pages are just an example of how it would look. Yeah. That, yeah that's oh, not right, what you're okay. accepting. No, no, you're, no, 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 in the principle of the story matrix. I think the evaluation on the first page is quite right. Yeah. Then the quality of the very Yeah. 
security uh, group yeah. that has been the case for a bit. They would find you seem to do much better in Northampton. Like us, it seems to be the same Okay, sorry. Yeah, do you want to say something, Keith? No? I want to say, Jerry, it was up from last time, but just as an update, I mean, I know the police are having an intake now. Uh, a lot of our current PCSOs, ours in Stuff Gifford, is coming back as a regular. Uh, I know Amelia, I think, is up, up to the same uh, group going in. And obviously there will be, eventually, hopefully, uh, you, you know, an increase in our footfall of policemen. But having said that, we are losing them off their beats and leaving the force all the time. So, you know, we're going to catch up. Yeah. Uh, it's one for our new PCC, of course. Or he or she, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you get your both in, won't you? <laughs> On the monthly expenditures, it's been put it back there. Um, one query is uh, the Pew Connect Black Economy footrest. That's a footrest for a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Two even. I was going to say for a leisure assistant who is a bit shorter than from a health and safety part. Thank you. 